welcome to Historic Canyon Road. And this is where it begins. It begins right here at the corner of Canyon Road, Cerro de Peralta. Right up there is Alameda. And uh, just this side of Alameda is the Santa Fe River. We are going to take a tour, a walking tour, up Canyon Road. Here we see some people loading art into galleries. And there's the Freeman Gallery over there. here on Canyon Road. Um, it is one of the older neighborhoods in Santa Fe. And uh, as we go along here, uh, you're going to see a lot of beautiful colors and a lot of art, a lot of sculpture. Not so many paintings because we're not going to go inside the galleries for this video. Here's Cafe Greco. Which, uh, I don't think they have Greek food here, because uh, I love Greek food, and if they did, I'd probably be all over it. I really like this artist's work. He does these beautiful wind sculpture things. They're very animated and colorful. that I bought on Amazon. I hope it works pretty good. It's kind of cheesy. Uh, I probably should have spent a little more and got a better one. But hopefully it'll be sufficient for our needs here. I've never been fond of this artist's work. It's just a little too cartoony for me. that rooster though.
Well, there's an empty space for lease, 409. If you want to open a gallery, there you go. One of the biggest art markets in the country next to New York. And maybe oh, Los Angeles. And uh, that's prime, prime retail space for a gallery. Although you will find that the rents here are exorbitant. Uh, it looks like a couple of galleries closed here. And uh, that's probably due to the pandemic. There's the La Roche Gallery, Carol La Roche. There's an interesting sculpture. This is where you might have heard of in uh, Santa Fe on Christmas Eve. We have kind of a celebration sort of a thing we do where we, uh, we put uh, farolitos all over the road, all over um, the curbs and the buildings and the you know, all these walls, these adobe walls and stuff. Everything gets covered with farolitos, which are these uh, basically little brown paper shopping bags with a little sand in them and a candle. And uh, those are hippies moving here from California and New York, California mostly, and they came in here and started renting out and buying up these properties, and uh, a lot of them were artists, and so they would open a gallery or a studio and um, started doing like creative stuff and buying up a lot of the these buildings, these, these homes from uh, Spanish families who had owned them for generations. And, uh, 
and then kind of, you know, it turned into a little art colony, and uh, gradually, uh, you know, through the, the the 80s and the 90s, a lot of big money came in here, and uh, this real estate kind of uh, skyrocketed. So many of those hippies who were living here back in, who bought property here back in the uh, uh, early 70s, late 60s, uh, all of a sudden were millionaires and billionaires. Uh, well, not billionaires, but uh, some of these properties are worth in the multiples of millions for sure. Uh, and uh, I remember when I was a little kid coming home from school, actually taking a stick and walking along and whacking every single one of those white pickets on that white picket fence. Pretty much every day until I got my skateboard and then I'd skateboard past it. much for this trip because it's kind of difficult with the stabilizing device but you can get an idea of the kind of frocks they're offering here beautiful restras here A lot of these buildings, you'll see, uh, they have these placards on them. These placards that uh, denote that they are historical buildings. Uh, I'll show you the next one we come up on. Next time I see one, we just passed one a few minutes ago. Here's a good example of one right there. Uh, Santa Fe Historic Foundation finds this building worthy of preservation, the Edwin Brooks House. This building was designed in the 1920s by artist and architect William Penhallow Henderson. From 1956, 1985, it was the residence and studio of Fremont F. Ellis, artist and member of Los Green Los Cinco Pintores. <laughs> I was going to say Gringos, Los Gringos Pintores, but it's Los Cinco Pintores. Howdy. And this place is called Chiaroscuro. time but apparently it's a gallery it doesn't look like there's anything on the walls right now I oh, maybe I'm wrong there's the Thornwood gallery fine art right there 555 Canyon Road left Ernesto Mayans gallery which is I guess kind of an old and August gallery it's been there for many many years a lot of these galleries come and go but some of them have been around for a really long time 
and this would be one of those Ernesto Mayans gallery. Over here we got K Contemporary. K Contemporary Gallery, 600 Canyon Road. There's an interesting piece of art. This was a restaurant for years, and I guess it's a gallery now. Actually, a few restaurants located here. Now it's Bill Hester Fine Art. Past the cruise gallery here. The owners are friends of mine, very cool people. Old family from Spain. There's a Zatara Contemporary. And there's some kind of cool sculptures over here. It's interesting, it doesn't really have a name on it, it's just 621, no name on the gallery. Some bright colors in these paintings. Across the street, we have 622 Canyon Road, Canyon Road Contemporary, and they got some sculptures. Sculptures in the yard. So far, I'm pretty happy with this stabilizing device. We'll see. Uh, what it looks like when we get home and upload it. 
but uh, it weighs a lot. So it's a good workout on the arm. It adds to the weight of my camera by a considerable amount. Here is the meeting house. A religious society of friends engaged in silent worship on Sundays, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. All are welcome. Another historic building here. Worthy of preservation, the Olive Rush Studio. like to this sculpture here my camera just went to sleep on me so I'm hoping I didn't lose a lot of footage got to keep an eye on my batteries too because I've got about two-thirds of my batteries left here it looks like this is bittersweet designs oh these are fadalitos like I was telling you about looks like they still got them out there's the Newark gallery where Gormley's general store used to be that's where I used to buy candy after school. Let's go visit the Gormleys. It is now a gallery, of course. Can't get candy here anymore. And Mr. and Mrs. Gormley died many years ago. But we used to come down this alley I went to school up there at the end of this uh, alley here is Asequia Madre and just to the right uh, about mm, 100 yards would be the Asequia Madre school and that's where I went to school in the sixth grade so I come over here come down this alley right here and get my candy from the Gormleys here. I was especially fond of wacky, wacky taffy and uh, garbage pail kids. We were all collecting garbage pail kids uh, candy. You know, when they had those little stickers in them. Down here, we got a whole little compound of galleries. Uh, Passed up the Matthews Gallery right there, 669. Canyon Road is the Matthews Gallery. And here we got Winter Out Fine Art down there. And uh, that's 701 Canyon Road, looks like. And GF Contemporary over there. Got some more sculptures down here. It's got to be a fake sunflower down there because it's winter. There's no sunflowers right now. Giacobbe Fritz, fine art, 702 Canyon Road. Giacobbe Fritz. And then there's this is Gypsy Alley, 708 Canyon Road. And there's just all these little. Uh, you know, it's been all subdivided out to all these different tenants. So it's got uh, one, two, three, four, five, at least, maybe six, seven, eight, nine different businesses in here. 
And this is Gypsy Baby, born to be spoiled. earlier I had a uh, a Whopper Junior with cheese and green chili which wasn't really all that satisfying but uh, mostly because it was cold fun town to grow up in, I'll tell you that. We had a lot of fun here in the 70s and the 80s and we even had some fun in the 90s. Uh, but after that this town has been pretty much no fun ever since. Just got overrun by rich people and uh, over gentrified over policed and now it's just kind of uh, this playground for the rich sort of it's gonna be interesting to see how the pandemic changes things Santa Palim is a new home uh, I can't stand that family. I used to uh, serve them sushi when I worked at Shoko Cafe. And they would always come in and uh, just make my life miserable. The whole family, you know, they'd come in with all their kids to the sushi bar and be very disruptive and very demanding and uh, just very self-entitled and rude and not not a pleasure to wait on. And they have several businesses in Santa Fe. I think they're from New York, this wealthy New York family that came here sometime in the 90s. This gallery is empty. Empty as can be. I don't know how well you can see through the window there, but it is empty. Vivo Contemporary over here. Got some sculptures out in front. Vivo. This is the very famous Geronimo restaurant. I worked here the first year they opened. Didn't fit in very well though. Didn't last long. Now let's take a look at their menu. Wasabi Caesar, $14. Asian pear salad, $14. Some good salads. One of my favorites, fiery sweet chili and honey Mexican white prawns, $38. I think it's widely considered to be a five-star restaurant. Um, and uh, I sure don't eat there because it's just way too expensive for me. But, uh, if you wanted to have a first-rate, you know, top-of-the-line meal, it's a good place to go, probably. More likely to find me at El Farol up the road a little ways. There's the Turner Carroll Gallery. And they've got an interesting sculpture here of Mao. I like it. Uh, 
colors are cool. You know, we get so much Southwestern art here that I really like to see, you know, more surrealist stuff. Uh, Cause I just get bored of all the Southwestern thing, you know. Desert Sun, fine leather and silver boutique here. That place has been there for many years. Uh, since I was a little kid, that place has been there. And in fact, I think one of my friends that I grew up with is, is well connected with that place. He, I know he worked there. <coughs> this is Globe Fine Art. I like the sculpture. It's kind of trippy with the reflective globe. That's very cool. <laughs> I like that. Let's get it from another angle. sculpture. Wow, now this is really, really remarkable. Look at this. Check that out. It's a metal tree with metal branches and metal chain leaves and little glass globes for fruit and here we got creative design that used to be Ernie's restaurant and I used to work there as a busboy when I was like 17 maybe yeah I want to say 17 16 17 the consignment gallery and it's now split into two businesses, but it used to be all one place. That's actually a really beautiful atrium in there. Or it once was. And up here on the right, tie on canyon. Well, this has to be new because I've never seen it before. It's obviously not open. So, they probably didn't make it and closed or maybe... Yeah. It's obviously closed. Too bad. Santa Fe really needs a good Thai restaurant. We, uh... If we want Thai, good Thai food, we generally have to go to Albuquerque. Oh look, these guys are from Texas. We get a lot of people from Texas here. It's kind of amazing actually. And here's El Farol. I worked here one summer as a waiter. And this is a really great place to get Spanish tapas. But it's closed right now. Looks like. Historic building. When I was a little kid, uh, really little, like three years old, this place was a bar called Bourbon and Blues. Uh, and Bourbon and Blues uh, was a rough, rowdy joint. It was fun. Uh, there's a sunken bar in here, kind of, and then uh, back then it had a pool table, and uh, 
my mom and my sisters used to come here and hang out and uh, drink and party with uh, party with the boys. Uh, but it's definitely uh, all shut down for the pandemic. Too bad. I remember this building here, this mural, from when I was a little, little child. And, uh, it's been touched up many times, uh, but it remains largely more or less unchanged, I guess. Looks like it's missing some details, but uh, kind of an iconic Santa Fe landmark. That building hasn't been used for anything but storage in years. We just walked by the Brad Smith Gallery, which there's a pretty little gallery here. Got some nice little paintings out here, Brad Smith. And we'll move along. You see that building up there with the portales, the kind of green uh, porch coming out there. That, uh, I lived in that building when I was working at Ernie's and uh, also went for a little while when I was working at La Posada. Went from La Posada to Ernie's. And uh, so that uh, building has a lot of fond memories for me. It was a really great time in my life living there. Uh, and uh, Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that story in another video, but some great memories in that house. This is Bell Brook, Bell Brook Gallery. Over here we got the stables. It looks like a, an artist cooperative, working artist studios. Now when I was a little kid, a bunch of glass blowers uh, had their operation going on right there in that building. And I remember was, we used to hang around there uh, just because the glass blowers were all cool. And I think my very first job, some lady had a business in that little uh, upstairs place right there with the blue with the blue surrounding the door she had a gallery or I don't know something going on there and she paid me and a couple other kids to make faralitos I don't think she paid us much maybe it was three cents a faralito or something like that but we earned enough to go get some candy at Gormley's at Gormley's store. And there's the tea house over there. Really uh, nice little place to go get Eggs Benedict and have some tea. Uh, owner is a colleague of mine. Uh, we do business together through my, uh, some of you know I do uh, online uh, sales, internet sales. I sell New Mexico chili on the internet, and this is one of our clients. He buys chili from us because he likes the very best for his uh, pastries and things that he makes, cakes and stuff. And uh, yeah, so there, that's a kind of a cool little area down there. You can see an artist down there working on his painting. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on him.
authentic Santa Fe artist. Authentically painting in the winter time for a small crowd. Alright, let's move along here. Again, that's where I used to live. Right up there and there. This is the building. My bedroom was inside here. Oh wow, it's been totally changed, but you can sort of see a door that goes to where my bedroom used to be. Oh, not from here. Oh well. And this was a ice cream shop when I lived here. Now it's Heko Amano, Heko Amano Gallery. But for many years during the 80s and the 90s, it was an ice cream shop. And, uh, I remember a really nice family run and family operated. They probably lived in there too. And uh, they had a really beautiful daughter who, of course, I had a crush on. All right, now, camera stopped recording again, which I hate. I think it does that every 30 minutes or so. I'm not sure, but don't know how much of my recording I missed which is distressing because I was telling you guys a great story. Uh, but I'm not going to try to fix it. I'm just going to keep on keeping on with this video. And what we get, we get. And what we don't get, we don't get. And it's just going to be the way it is. So... I wonder if it happened when I tried to zoom in on the artist. Here's another gallery space for rent. 636 Canyon Road. 505-660-2637 if you're interested. Bad time to be opening a gallery, I would think. And here we got Cielo handcrafted. I've seen half a dozen galleries go in and out of this spot in the last 10 years. So I consider it a bad luck place, and this place will probably fail as well. Here is a really cool horse at Ronnie Layden Gallery. Ronnie Layden Fine Art. Ronnie Layden's a good friend of mine. Everyone calls him Crazy Ronnie because he's a little crazy. But uh, oh, here's a couple of his paintings right here. See Ronnie Layden Fine Art. And oh, here's one of his paintings. There's another little pencil drawing or something. Pretty cool. Kind of stylized. And that's Ronnie's sculpture garden. He's got some sculptures here. And uh, this kind of, uh, it's not really the end of it. There's maybe one or two or maybe even three more galleries up the road there, but this is pretty much the end of the business district of Canyon Road. And then from there on up, it's mostly uh, just residences. And it's really beautiful. Upper Canyon Road is really beautiful. And I'll take you guys up there on another video, maybe. Uh, so this is basically, you know, the end of my tour of the Canyon Road Art District. And, uh, 
Thanks for hanging in, you guys. I really appreciate your watching my videos. I really appreciate your commenting on my videos and sharing my videos on your social media. And uh, for those precious few of you that actually send me money, uh, thank you so much. I mean, that's really amazing, and I'm, I'm really grateful for it. It really does help me keep doing uh, what I do. Keep uh, keep making videos and uh, and finding the courage to do it. Beautiful little house here with a stone wall in front of it. All right, now I want y'all to uh, stay tuned for my next video, which is going to be titled "Hiking Down the Santa Fe River." And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hike all the way down the Santa Fe River here and I'm going to film it for you in HD and um, we'll see what we see. See you in the next video. Bye now.